For our next lesson, we're going to take a look at arithmetic and geometric series. Now, the important thing here is a series is just the term that we use when we add all of the terms in a sequence together. So instead of having commas in between them, like we would have for a sequence, we would say that we're adding all those values. So there's going to be a plus in between all of the different values. Now, if we wind up with a minus in between, we're just adding a negative value, but it's still the same idea. For a geometric sequence, the series will work the same way. We're just adding all these numbers together. We have a couple of formulas for how this works. When we're looking at the arithmetic, there's two different formulas we have. We can say that the sum of the numbers is equal to the number of the terms divided by 2 multiplied by the first term plus the last term. The key for this is we need to know what the value of the last term is in order to use this one. The second formula is going to be the sum of the numbers is n divided by 2 times 2 times the first term plus n minus 1 times the difference. This is the formula that we use if we don't know what the value of the last term is because it's going to solve for that value in here using this process. We have the same idea when we get to geometric series. For geometric series, we have two possible formulas. We have one where we don't know the value of the last term, and we have one where we do know the value of the last term. So, if we're putting it into practice, and it wants us to find the sums, well, the first thing that we need to do is figure out, is this arithmetic or is it geometric in order to use our formulas? Well, if I rewrite this 1 over 2 and say that would be the same as 1 over 12, because the other two are both over 12, plus 6 over 12, plus 11 over 12, I can see that it is changing in the numerator by a constant each time. It's going up by 5, which means that I actually have a difference of 5 over 12. It's also telling me that it wants the S24, which means that my n value is going to be 24, and I know that term 1 is equal to 1 over 12. Because I don't know the value of the last term, I'm going to use the formula that doesn't include the last term. I'm going to say that the sum of the first 24 numbers is going to be n divided by 2, or 24 divided by 2, multiplied by 2 times the first term, plus the number of terms minus 1 times the common difference of 5 over 12. The sum of the first 24 is going to be 117, if you put that all in your calculator properly. When we get to the next one. We're going to say, well, is it arithmetic or geometric? It seems to be reducing by 2 every single time. So I have a difference of negative 2. I have a first term of 3. And I have a last term of negative 37. Now, in order to be able to do this, I need to know what or how many terms I have. If you take a look back at the formula again, no matter which one of these I use, I still need to solve for how many terms 
if I'm doing it arithmetically. So I'm going to have to figure out how many terms I actually have to begin with. I'm going to say that negative 37 is equal to the first term plus n minus 1 times negative 2. Or negative 40 is equal to n minus 1 times negative 2. Twenty is equal to n minus one, which means that there's twenty-one terms in here. And now I can use that second formula that I have. The sum of the first twenty to one numbers is going to be twenty-one divided by two multiplied by the first term plus the last term. The sum of the first 21 numbers is going to be 357. Sorry, negative 357. When I get to example C, now I have my first arithmetic one. Or sorry, a geometric one. So I can see that every single time I'm multiplying by negative one half. Remember, we can always solve that ratio by saying that r would be negative 20 over 40, or negative one over two. My first term is 40, and I know that I have 15 terms, because it tells me that right here. So. I'm going to say that the sum of the first 15 terms is going to equal 40 multiplied by negative 1 over 2 to the power of 15 all minus 1. And I'm going to divide that by negative 1 over 2 minus 1. The sum of the first 15, it's not really a happy round number. As a fraction, it's going to be 5, 4, 6, 1, 5 over 2048. For example, D I have my first term is 5. My ratio is going to be 15 over 5, or I'm tripling it each time. And my last term is 10,935. So once again, I'm going to wind up using that other formula. I'm going to state that the sum of the first n numbers, because I don't actually know how many there are, but I don't need that for this geometric one, is going to be my ratio, which is 3, multiplied by the value of the last number, minus the value of the first number, all divided by the ratio of minus 1. And the sum in this case is going to be 16,400. For example 2, given an arithmetic sequence in which the first term is 17, the 38th term is 128, find the sum of the first 53 terms. Well, I know that term 1 is equal to 17. I know that the difference is going to be 128 minus 17 over, this was term 38, and this is term 1, so it's increasing by 3 every single time. 
And now I can use a formula for when I don't know what the value of the last term is. The sum of the first 53 is going to equal 53 over 2 multiplied by 2 times 17 plus 53 minus 1 times 3. The sum of the first 53 terms is going to be 5,035.